muffler. Damn. <laughs> we got a weak hydro though. Jeez, holy crap. Sounds like we're taking off. Holy smokes. We'll be back, kids. She's working. Oh, no. Are we charging? I don't even know. I can't see. Holy crap. Now it goes up hills. You give her some more beans, though, she won't go faster. She'll just bog down. Holy crap. We're rock crawling, people. That muffler's pretty darn quiet, though. I might leave that on there. Oh, we might have gained a half mile per hour. Up, oh, we're losing it. Oh, no. We probably ran out of gas. You son of a bitch. We'll tag along, kids. Help me push. Holy crap. Well, we got some better light up here. We got ourselves a 68 Hydro Track 12. All I literally did was uh, put gas in it, a new fire motor and some line, and didn't even put a battery in it. Didn't check the spark plug. We did nothing. She pushes easier now that it's got moving. The struggle's real. Come on, baby. Oh, now you're gonna fucking be hard to push. Haven't I pushed you enough? Jiminy. All right. <laughs> so there is our find. So we bought that old girl and this old guy. And they, they seem to be fitting in pretty good, I'd say. So we'll fire this guy up here and you heard that one run. The first time I ever saw this happen where somebody must have that hood fitment that thing latches on there good but i had never seen somebody take a roll log disc or whatever the hell that is with an allen bolt come on people and then run it in there for your choke what a shame that carburetor actually works good that might be the old uh the testing carburetor i'll just leave that alone and we'll use that for testing junk that doesn't run we got a nice tank there's my Jade Mist tank. Might have to clean it up to put on the SS12. I'm not parting this one out, but I might take some parts that are nicer to put on stuff more deserving. Um, the cigarette lighter did pop out earlier, but the, the piece behind it that grounds it out is wiggling around, so I think it lost its ground for me driving it. But I almost had this uh, old girl about a year ago on Craigslist. Somebody bought it, and then they took the wheel weights off of it. As you can see, they once were there but they're not anymore so i snagged this and this guy for 350 so and i'm pretty impressed the fuel smelt pretty turpentiney and i figured fuck it don't even check anything just hit the switch well the switch didn't even work i had to um go off the terminal back there with the jump box so we got some conductivity issues but i must say i'm pretty pleased she runs pretty damn good for what it is. We got some custom modification there, which I don't know what that is. Looks like something slid down in that, maybe a light. Old trucker candle sticks on it, maybe, I don't know. And then this is our other guy that we got. It's got the famous hood busted. But I have the piece that broke out with the hinges still intact, so we're not screwed yet. This part still has the hinge area for you to put a bolt through so i just gotta doctor that up and put it together so i'll probably fix that nose and leave this hood and everything on this one um let's check underneath the under the power barn right james <laughs> the old power barn so this guy runs came with the battery <laughs> And uh, it needs just a little bit of tuning on it. I left it outside overnight with the, the air cleaner or the hood off of it. So the air cleaner was holding all the water and some got down the carburetor. So I let it run for about half an hour today. This one, the safety switch 
the last few tractors I've got have had that on it, that little finger fork thing. So it has to be a neutral to start it. We got a little bit of a weak clutch going on, but this has been a uh, set all pretty much from this morning. I started up this morning. So this is the starting procedure. Now, if I take the choke off, it's gonna act stupid. I'm gonna put some fresh gas in it. Now it'll clean itself up and it'll run okay for a little bit and then it's gonna starve for gas here shortly. Or maybe let it run for 30 minutes, cleaned it up, but it, would, it did not like idling. That's pretty good actually. So this is new to me, new to you guys. So that's the best it's ran since I've owned it. I think with some fresh gas and maybe changing the plugs and cleaning the points and a few things, it should run really well. I'm gonna do some oil changes in the next few days. She is running way better. We just gotta give her some fresh uh, fresh fuel. I think I looked in here and it was like orangish looking. I don't know if you can see, but she got, she did, this one just definitely hasn't been drinking and staying hydrated, we'll say that. That's what it looks like. So we got all the covers. I got the hood, I got the mesh for in the grill, so and it actually has the original seat, which I mean that's that's kind of pointless now, but we can cut that Sears part out of the seat and do like we did on the other one. So that's kind of a score. So I'm either putting a metal pan or uh, another plastic seat on it. But I'd say for for Trey Fitty, that's pretty good. So we were talking, me and James were talking, maybe uh, it has a nice set of original tires on it because I need to get some nicer ones for the 500,000th. So, as long as these aren't dry rotted, which they don't appear to be, it's a hot dog. And they're holding air. So what I might do is uh, switch tires with this guy, put some ags on it and get these for the 500,000th and save myself 300 bucks instead of buying them new uh, Sears looking tires. Because old Jeff ain't made of money as much as people think I am. I just blow it all. So we ain't gonna blow it on them tires, I know that. But those would be nice on the 500,000 to clean them up and uh, you can actually put like shoe shine on tires and make them look nice to revitalize the black. So I might do something dumb like that or put some tire shine on them and see what happens. But we got them both running, Danimal. So you were right, a couple days and we had her running. I think this one I'm gonna probably put that snow plow on. That's the one I modified to make it where it lifts higher. This is uh, like two plows put together. I welded that because it had a crack and these aren't normally welded across the top, but I figured smoke them if you got them. I went after it with the welder. That's not so pretty, but it had grease and oil in it. And every single plow I own is broken there. I bet you, you guys, yours are broken there too, this pivot point. Cause it's still, um, let me see here. It still pivots cause it's welded to this guy. They weld it to the shaft there, but that breaks off, and I guess it doesn't really matter because it just pivots on this portion. So, I don't know. It still works when it's broken, but I welded it just for shits and giggles. Um, if anybody, which I know all the the 20 of you that watch this YouTube channel are probably smart enough to know. The thing I did was uh, just, you probably knew from the pictures I posted is what I mean, but all you have to do is that's the original mounting hole. You just... There's already an existing hole down below it that's, uh, instead of a 3 8 hole, it's 5 16 You just punch her out to 3 8 and slip that around and Bob's your uncle. Now one other thing I noticed the more I looked at them is, these plows have this ear, which this is what you're really changing, is how far down this rod goes to where it starts actually doing something. Because normally these plows, when you put them down, it's like it goes 6 inches down into the ground. When would you ever be doing that? So. When you rate, lower that point, it makes it to where the it doesn't lower as much, but it raises up higher. So, I was thinking if you took all four of these bolts out and you took this guy, and you flipped the whole plate around to where this guy was down, this ear was down here, you would basically do the same thing as what I did there. 
So I don't know if people just install these wrong when they put them together or how they were put together, but that's what I gathered. Because if you put this rod into this hole, it would go like, it would only be, it would probably never even get off the ground. So I hope that makes sense. But that's what I, that's what I pondered and figured on it. So that's the plow situation. That's the SS16 situation. The Hydratrack 12 situation. This one, uh, we mowed and played around the last video, um, but it started having a charging issue. It'd be, you'd be riding it around and this guy would just be, yay, I'm charging, woohoo. And then all of a sudden, default, right to the end. She said, you're doing something wrong there, pal. So, and it would just keep going back and forth, back and forth. So I'm thinking it's a rectifier. Um, I don't know what it, well, I have all these parts laying around. I don't know what the hell that rectifier came off of. So, it could be bad. It could have been off something real rat ratty. I, I just don't remember. So, I'm going to have to scrounge up another one and throw it on there and just see. Because I drove it around and when it discharged, it literally drained the whole battery on this thing. So, luckily it didn't fry anything. Um, hopefully it didn't fry the stator, at least the charging portion of it. But if it did, I guess it's not the end of the world. We just would have to have a jump pack here or a charged up battery or a battery charger on it. The 16.6 uh, that I talked to you, James, and a few Ian's about, this is the one that my stepdad deemed junk and said it would never run because he tried and tried and tried. But this guy has been here a couple weeks. This one, um, I would have to say it's probably low on compression on one hole or maybe both or something, but I maybe I'm wrong on that. But this one, it seems like when you start it up, it likes to get a lot of choke and you want to just like sweat sweat the cylinders down if there's a word if that's the right terminology but it seems like it won't run till it gets nice and fat and then once it's nice and fat it'll sit there and run perfect at idle all day long but this is a cold cold start you gotta get where she just chugging her out Let her get wet and then see she's fighting she wants to shut off but if you let it sit here and idle with the choke on for probably 30 seconds i know it ain't happy but this thing runs all day long if i wanted to cold-blooded but this thing I've put hours on this puppy this is probably the most I've used a suburban is this guy but she throttles right up and she'll idle like this all day but she sure is fucking stinky once she gets warmed up she's a happy girl but this one had the dropped valve seat this one set the guy said maybe 10 years 15 years because uh he, he actually mowed his lawn for a whole year, he said, with only one cylinder firing and just hammering the front cylinder. The valve seat was completely wallered out. I had to have a custom one made for it. But she runs. She she got the the hood mod, the, the remove your hinge mod, the quick release hood mod. And then we got this Hydratrack 12 that I should probably have gotten running by now, but... Hey, we're all lazy with some things, I guess. Especially these two. These two need to come out, but I, I got owning fever nowadays, so I see them on Facebook. I just gotta have them now that we know all the secrets. So, and then I'm I'm into these hydras now that you. It's nice to just be able to go forward and back on the fly and not be banging gears around. So I'd like to plow with one maybe this year, or I don't know about snow blowing here, how that how well that would work out, but. We're going to definitely be having more fun here with the Suburbans being able to use them. I got a job for 
one of these guys soon to level this off up here. So that'll be coming soon. I hope you didn't get dizzy there. I had to turn you upside down. But me and James, we love these uh, Ratty SS-16s, so I probably can't kill this one either. It runs too good. The metal tank's nice. I don't have too many metal tanks that are nice. I had, uh, LJ gave me one, I do believe. That was him that gave me one. I still got to put that to use on the, the yellow hydro. So that's about the only nice tank I have that's off something. The rest of them all rusted up. I've just been switching them to plastic ones. There's the mesh for this guy. Um, that's what we got pretty much going on. I got to clean up the rest of my mess up here. We got the junk parked up here. I hope you're not sun blind. I'm going to start tearing apart the Mustang in about a week or two. So she'll be off the road. Rest in peace, old, old stallion. Then we got white lightning up here. Or snowball is what we call it, because when I got it, that, that fucking thing snowballed out of control of how much stuff it needed. Holy crap. <laughs> so. Oh my. Yeah, we got to level this all off. Clean all this remnants of where the all the stuff was. Get some grass seed going so we can mow. Get the trailer in a different spot, hopefully. So, lots to come. But I just wanted to show you guys what we got done with the the tractors we bought and uh, where they're at. So, I'm gonna have some content hopefully on this guy pretty soon, tearing it apart. Um, not much to be said on the S10. I've been kicking the idea around about putting a different engine in it. Uh, nothing fancy. I, the 2.2 two that's in it, the little four-cylinder, it makes some noise when you first start it up, like lift or tick. It'd be nice to put a fresh one in it. So, I don't know. It runs. It makes some noise. I'll probably never sell it, so it really doesn't matter. So, run her till she blows. Give her fucking hell. But, that's pretty much it for the stuff. The gravel's kind of getting washed around. That was our last big project here. I almost need another little dump truck load. Um... But that's all we pretty much have going on. I'm going to probably mess with this some more and get it to where it's more turnkey. i got to get the ignition switch to even work to become turnkey. And uh, this guy's pretty much turnkey. I'm going to, as soon as I get off here, put some gas in it and run it around a little bit. And uh, that's pretty much it. One thing, now that we have a hydro in front of us, I was telling James and I think somebody else about this. I have a bad memory sometimes for some stuff. But when you, it seems like people thread this on way too far over time. It seems like these hydras work better because see, if you have that threaded in the whole way, it only goes that far. If you turn it out a little bit, you can get that valve to close off a little bit more. So I've been uh, putting a little bit of Loctite on them, or even silicone is probably better. Put some silicone on there to get the threads kind of gummed up. But have it to where you push that down and the valve's the whole way down and then you set this to where it's the whole as as far as it goes down before it starts pulling the rod out with the threads so i did that and it seemed like this this one moved a little bit better but it's also who knows how much fluids in it and whatnot but i know this one uh, i did that and it seemed to work completely different it, it helped it out a lot so maybe that can help somebody but we just have hydros everywhere here holy smokes people so this is getting pretty long, so hope you enjoy. Danimal, you were right. We got him running. That's about the easiest. I was going to go through like a how-to, how to get that guy running, but she literally just took right off. All I did was put some fuel line on it and uh, prayed to God that it still had ignition, and away we went. So I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, if you want to see something different or see a tractor in particular, let me know. Talk to you later.